Hi everyone and thanks for dropping by Pete's Garage. I want to show you the Cobra motor build and it's going to be in several parts because it's fairly complex and I'm going to try and put in as much detail as I can but I want to show you how this fuel injection engine is going to be built. It's kind of neat and I think you'll enjoy it. Let's get started. Got the crank already in place. The main bearings have been line honed which allowed me to just drop the crank in. The crank was ground on the mains to exactly fit the hone. Drop the crank in, put the caps on, put the girdle in, bolt it all down, 120 foot pounds. I can flip it over, drop the pistons in. Since the block was bored out 30 thousandths and I have new pistons, I have to gap the rings to make sure the gap is the same. And a high performance engine, about 18 thousandths gap, grind open all the rings and this one fits about 18 thousandths perfect. Put that together and I can put the rings on the pistons. I already have the oil rings on the pistons. You use a piston ring tool to expand the ring. Very gently put it over the piston. Get it in the slot. And release. You put the bottom ring in first. There's my first ring installed. Continue with the last ring. Then I'll drop it in the cylinder. If you have bolts on your connecting rods, put some rubber on there so you don't hit the crank. Turn the crank out of the way. So the crank is furthest away, that way you don't nick the crank pin with the piston and, and if you put a nick in there that will ruin the crank, you have to have it reground. Put the piston in, gently set it into place, make sure it's in position, and then you want to tap it into place. I use our mallets to hold it straight and you want to try and get it one continuous motion. piston is in place. Slide the piston in place over the connecting rod, making sure you don't nick it. Seat it perfectly, put the bearing cap on, torque it down. With a very light coating of oil and all the bores, rotate the whole assembly, make sure it all moves freely. Couple rotations, everything feels great. Now with all the cam bearings lube, I'm going to slide this giant cam into place very, very slow. Main thing is not to drop it and scratch the bearings on the inside. Support it from the front as much as you can. One last one to go. And there we go. I had to put the cam thrust plate on here. But this high performance sprocket that's going to go on the cam has a needle bearing on the back. And if I just bolted it to the thrust plate, the hex bolts would interfere with the holes. So Comp Cams provides uh, some, some screws. You put an 82 degree countersink in the hole, and these screws are used. They're countersunk just below the surface of the cam thrust plate and a little Loctite will hold that right in. I used a magnetic base and a dial indicator to get piston number one to top dead center. Now I can bring my my cam gear, slide it on, zero position, matched up with the timing dot, and I'm going to put this right at zero dead nuts timing because the cam is ground four degrees ahead. So I could put my timing chain on dot lines up with zero degrees number one top dead center. Now I can put the bolt in. With the head sitting in place I can lube my, ro uh, my rollers. Put some lube around the entire lifter. Slide them into place. I'm getting ready to put the heads on and I use all ARP fasteners. The ARP, ARP fasteners are grade 8 hardware. They're fantastic, but I have a problem. I didn't want the black 
head on the outside of the engine. I want to keep it all chrome, all nice and shiny. So what I did was I used the um, the Eastwood Eastwood electroplating system. It's a pretty simple system. Only needs three volts. I have a voltage supply with a variable voltage, and uh, I was able to take these bolts, bead blast them, and then uh, coat them with that system. And you can see that they're very nice and shiny, a little light buffing, and they look gorgeous. I'd recommend the uh, Eastwood electroplating system for anybody who wants to do some plating of small hardware like this. It worked fantastic. So now I can bolt my heads down. Now that I have the heads bolted in place, I have my rocker arm studs in place. They're not torqued down yet because I have my guide plates in place for my push rods. Before I can tighten any of this down, I've got to make sure everything's lined up with the rocker arms. One thing to note here is I'm using titanium caps for the valves here. These are about 30% lighter than a steel cap. This will allow me to get about 8% more RPM on the top end of the motor. If I re reduce the mass of this valve assembly here, the spring can return faster and it will allow the valve to close faster, get better response on the engine. So titanium caps give you a little more response. A little lot more expensive, but well worth it when you have a small engine you want to get a lot of horsepower out of the top end. Uh, for my rocker arms, uh, I will be using Scorpion Racing products for a couple reasons. They're beautiful products. And secondly, as it says right there in the box, they're made in America. And they're really proud of it. What I'm going to be using is two different ratios. For the intake, I'll be using a 1.72 for the uh, intake valve. So I'll have a 1.72 for the intake. And the exhaust will be a 1.6. See how beautiful these are made. Uh, made in America, and, and, and yes, these are a beautiful product. The Scorpion products are gorgeous. I love uh, most of the products that I use. Uh, whenever I can, I always use them because they are gorgeous. So there's my exhaust rocker arm. Now i got to put those in place and get everything centered here with the, with the push rods, torque down my uh, stud for the rocker arms, and then I can set the lash and make sure that they all work properly. Adjusting the valve lash is fairly simple. I have the cam in a neutral position for both of these valves, meaning that the valves are closed and the cam is all the way on the short part of the lobe. I'm going to crank the engine over in the regular rotation, which is clockwise, until this exhaust starts to move. Okay, so that starts to move. Then what I do is I take this and I'm going to move on this push rod here. I push up and down, I'm going to loosen this up, move up and down on a push rod until there is no movement like that so there's no zero lash there I'm going to take it and I'm going to turn it a half a turn then I'm going to continue to rotate the engine until the intake valve opens see the intake valve opening there and it's going to come all until it's almost all the way closed and I'll do the same thing with the exhaust valve make sure that you lift up the, lift up the push rod until there's zero zero lash get it right about you don't want to compress the lifter because it's hydraulic. So I'm just getting the lash out like that. And I'll turn another half a turn. Now I can tighten down both of these nuts in the middle here, these set screws, and that'll hold these in place and those valves will be adjusted. Continue with the rest of the engine. Okay, so now that I have the rocker arms put on both sides and I have the lash adjusted and I turned over the motor several times to make sure that the guide plates for the push rods are in the exact center and the rollers are rolling exactly on the center of the tip of the valve. I want to put the intake manifold on right now but since I converted this into fuel injection there are some extra provisions I have to make. Uh, adding fuel injection is fairly complicated. There's a lot of wiring and a lot of sensors that go on the motor and it all starts with a computer. This is a computer that you'd find uh, in, a, in a new vehicle. This happens to be one very similar to the new Corvette so I have 130 screens of tuning available for the motor management system. I have a single channel wideband O2 controller for the oxygen sensor and just a standard microprocessor controlled ignition system that is the DFI6 from XL that goes with the coil for the ignition and that all goes through the dual sync distributor. Uh, the big problem I'm having right now, it's not really a problem, I have to make provisions for this. The O2 sensor has to get mounted in the collector for the headers 
and there are regular sensors that you'd find on every vehicle. There's a cooling temperature sensor and uh, um, airflow sensors, mass airflow sensor, then you have throttle position sensor and a map sensor. But this, this sensor right now is something I have to make a provision for. This computer requires the idle air temperature to be monitored. So I have to uh, drill a hole and mount this idle air temperature sensor in the intake manifold. And it's a lot easier to do before I mount it to the motor. So I will take the manifold, I'll put a hole in there, I will mount the uh, idle air temperature sensor in there and then I can put the manifold on and then I can continue with the rest of the build.